My name is Rita Rivera, and today's show is on shamanism, and specifically shamanism in our own community. I am a local teacher, entrepreneur, and author, and it is my great pleasure to speak with Patrick Gillis. Welcome, Patrick. And we are here to introduce you to master Peruvian shaman, Jose Luis Herrera. And just a little bit about Patrick. Patrick Gillis is an expert in helping others integrate their spiritual, family, and professional lives by providing a variety of shamanic services to our Central Coast community. And Patrick was named our area's best shamanic mentor by Good Times Magazine. And he maintains a shamanic mentoring and healing practice, teaches a variety of classes, and offers many free events in our community. Thank you, Patrick, and welcome. Well, thank you, Rita. It's lovely to be here. Yes. I just want to say a little bit about Jose Luis Herrera, who was born into a thousand-year-old tradition of mountain and jungle healers, shamans, and mystics. He has been extensively trained in the medicine traditions of the Americas, with particular interest in his native Andes and the Amazon culture. He is an accomplished naturalist, explorer, and mountain guide, and he is also university trained and an engineer in computer sciences. He is fluent in Spanish, Quechua, and English. He is the chairman of the Andean Research Institute and conducts training and programs in North America, Europe and also in his native Peru. And in addition to his powerful informative lectures and group leadership, he sings and whistles the amazingly beautiful Icaros of the tradition. So Patrick, you've known Jose Luis for quite a while. Can you tell us a little bit more about Jose Luis and your relationship with him? Sure, I'd be glad to, Rita. I received an invitation to travel to Southern California to, to attend a training offered by Jose Luis. And although I get a lot of invitations to attend various events, because I had known Jose Luis through his former students, a correspondence and a discussion about the possibility or the feasibility of him coming to our area. Mm -hmm. That was a little over three years ago. And over time, we put together the plans. There were a number of people that I had previously worked with who were interested in deepening their own knowledge, their mm -hmm. own experience. And Jose was clearly the one to, to uh, take that to mm -hmm. them. So in April of 2014, he came and we launched our first uh, Peruvian medicine wheel class. Well, that is so fantastic because I love Jose Luis, and we are so happy to have him in our community. And I have traveled far and wide to study with him and be with him, and to have him here in Santa Cruz is pretty, pretty extraordinary. So let's take a quick look now at a clip of Jose Luis discussing his decision to become a shaman. My name is Jose Luis Herrera, and I am from Peru, a native from Peru. And I'm here in Canada to do a training on the healing traditions of the Andes. Shamanism has had historically a bad uh, rap from different religions, but they forget that most of the uh, of most, most of the religions, if not all the religions, are based on shamanic practices. Can I, join your I, I worked as a civil engineer. I worked as as a systems analyst. I worked in corporate America wearing a suit and a tie and then one of those days I decided to wear a poncho. When I look back at, the his, at, at my own history, my own, my own story with these medicine traditions, uh, a lot of this information, even though it was available, you had to, to look in the right places. I met medicine people, people that worship mountain spirits. Uh, I spend a great deal of time uh, learning with the you know, jaguar shamans, the ayahuascaros. And they're incredible, incredible whistlers, musicians. They channel the voice of the rainforest. I followed them. They became, to an extent, teachers, gurus to me. You know, I had to choose, you know, to, how do I serve the world in a, in a more provo uh, provocative way as far as creating opportunity and magic, you know? Is it 
Is it through engineering, building? Is it through computers, systems? Is it, you know, through philosophies? So I chose magic. So that's what I do. The particular class that I have been, I have been teaching this weekend deals with healing. This has to do with tools in assisting people on how to heal and how to transform and eventually, you know, how to, how to cope with reality, really. Culture is ridden with aggression, with fear, you know, with violence. It's ridden with suffering and it's going to affect you, you know. So what can you do? I'm not saying how can you ward off or defend yourself, rather how can you create an environment for you in which good things happen to you. Yeah, so can you tell us a little bit more about the course that he offers? You mentioned the medicine wheel. Can you say a little bit about what that is? Sure. Uh, we actually, the, the title of the course is actually the Shaman's Cosmology, mm -hmm. but it corresponds to a category of class known as the medicine wheel, mm -hmm. it, which basically takes the aspirant or the initiate around or along a medicine path. Now, Jose Luis, because of his profound connection and knowledge of the Peruvian traditions, has prepared this shaman's cosmology class to replicate the steps encountered on the on the Andean mm -hmm. uh, path, but it's it's modified a little bit to suit our North American sensibilities. Right. So it's something that we can experience and bring right back mm -hmm. into our regular lives. Uh, lives. So what would be some of the benefits that someone would receive when they step onto this path and go through this training of the medicine wheel? Sure. The the benefits are are really quite wonderful mm -hmm. and they they shift a little bit from individual to individual because we all have our unique properties exactly. and our unique uh, challenges and aspirations in life but fundamentally the the first benefit is a more profound connection to the essence of our lives mm -hmm. especially relative to our, our relationship with mother earth mm -hmm. Uh, and it's various uh, beautiful power spots, mm -hmm. uh, mountains, rivers, lakes, and other areas that uh, are especially supportive to our individual journeys. Right. So that's a theme that is uh, mm -hmm. presented and reinforced throughout the entire training, but other elements of the training, uh, benefits of the training, first of all, we we experience or we learn to basically shed the effects of our past, mm -hmm. to step mm -hmm. away from the limiting beliefs mm -hmm. that we can so often see in others, but uh, so often also accept as being absolutely true mm -hmm. and uh, unmovable in ourselves. Right. So through a variety of exercises, ceremonies, healings, uh, we begin to, we, we learn to begin to let these limiting beliefs go. So by the end of the very first training, we are operating with a new perspective mm -hmm. about who we are mm -hmm. and how we, uh, how we relate to our personal lives right. and how we function in our roles in society. Yeah. Patrick, tell us a little bit about the Incan cosmology. It's something that you've mentioned, and I'd like the viewers to hear a little bit more about that. Sure, Rita. Well, the, the Incan cosmology is uh, related to the mountains, the high mountains of Peru, the Andes, and the people that live there have a particular relationship with nature. Mm -hmm. They uh, honor it in a particular way and carry that forward into their daily lives. So they also work with each other with that same degree of honor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah. I'd love to introduce to the viewers what a mesa is. And when you step on this journey of the medicine wheel, you begin to build what's called a mesa. And here are two mesas uh, on the table with us today. And Patrick, can you say a little bit more about what a mesa is and how it reflects the journey that we're on? Sure. This, uh, this cosmology 
comes from a tradition of stone carrying shamans. Mm -hmm. And so the mesa is a medicine bundle that contains a number of objects, including several stones and, and perhaps some crystals. Uh, it's accumulated and assembled over the course of a shaman initiate's training. Mm -hmm. So as we go through the shaman's cosmology course, which is composed of four different steps, right. uh, with each step, course participants will add a little bit more mm -hmm. to their mesa. And it's not simply a matter of adding objects, they're actually doing the work, gaining the experience that relates to the step that right. they're addressing. And so but, it's about building power. Yes. 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 Mm -hmm. uh, building, expressing. Mm -hmm. uh, and by the end of the course, they will have assembled what's known as a full mesa mm -hmm. and become uh, full mesa carriers mm -hmm. and be able to use this as a tool for personal enrichment, mm -hmm. empowerment, and if they're in the healing professions, they also may choose to use it to support their own practices. Right, that's beautiful. The clip we are about to show is taken at the Temple of the Wind in the Sacred Valley in Peru, with Jose Luis translating from local shaman Don Ilario about the wind and various aspects of the tradition. And, and this, this wind spirits, this wind people, some of them have great power. Now we, we need to harness. For instance, Ollantaytambo mm -hmm. is like a blender. It's never still. You have, you know, I mean, geographically speaking, there are three major corridors right here and everything comes and collides and you have all these vortices of, of wind and you can be blown away. And there's been people that have been blown away <laughs> here, mm. particularly in the afternoons. So uh, Don Hilario says, you know, you need to be anchored to the land and nothing will blow you away. Mm. However, let's talk about the other end of, of, the, of the spectrum the good winds, mm -hmm. the good spirits. And we have come up, up, to the, up to this place because this is where the good winds meet, the good spirits. Mm -hmm. And our prayers, for instance, will be carried by this by this pristine primeval winds into the into the mountain tops, and our prayers will be responded. And some of this some of these winds uh, bring the essence of these mountain spirits that can empower us, that can ignite us, that can refuel us. We, we come to these places to reset, to regain our clarity. How, how do you do your? How, how do you regain your clarity? It, you know, I don't want an answer from that. But how do you do that, right? So in the Andes, we come to places like this to reset, so we can see clear. So we, we are not entrenched, even if our framework of reference is acute and clear, still, you're trapped in it. How can you engage in a perceptual shift? How can you move beyond your own lens, your own, you know, framework of reference? Places like this allow you to engage in perceptual shifts. So that's what clarity is for him. So, winds are carriers, vehicles of all kinds of energies, you know, dense, dense dark energies and uh, uh, healing, transforming and empowering uh, 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 energies as well. So, so winds like winds are like people. Okay, the wind people are like like people. You know, they're good people and they're bad people. And he's using a metaphor. You know, there are people that raise cows and there are people that steal those cows. <laughs> <laughs> So, 
Manarikusu, Alinguaira Kunat. So here we are on top of this Temple of the Winds, and there are four niches and major wind spirits. So let's, let's bring this, this wind spirits into our minds, our bodies. So let's clear, cleanse. And let's, let's, the, let, let, let's allow the winds of knowledge come into our heads, come into, come into our minds. Or, or let's, let's allow the winds, you know, empower us, strengthen us. That's all I can, thank you for listening to me, thank you. So it's my experience living here in Santa Cruz since 1983 that this is a very artistic and spiritually oriented community. And there are many wonderful things to partake of here. And I found that uh, Jose Luis coming into our community just gives us another opportunity to deepen and enrich our lives and an opportunity to honestly really open our hearts to all that is really present around us. Absolutely, Rita. The, uh, the work that Jose Luis provides is really geared to our North American sensibilities, mm -hmm. including those that we are living in Santa Cruz. Uh, it doesn't require us to don ponchos or assume uh, tr various trappings that aren't native to us. Right. Uh, we were born in North America, mm -hmm. and that's part of our destiny, and yet this beautiful and powerful work also belongs. Mm -hmm. So we're able to integrate this. And this yeah. is especially beautiful in such a spiritually oriented community mm -hmm. such as ours. And I believe one of the elder shaman in Peru said that the new shamans are coming from North America. Is that true? Did you... I think it was something Alberto Valaldo, another shaman, uh, has said many times that they have prophecy that the new shamans are coming from North America and we are the urban shamans. Yes, I've heard that too on, on many occasions and it makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the world looks to North America and to some degree Europe. This tradition, the sh shamanic cosmology, is very old. It belongs with humanity and therefore it's entirely appropriate that we should pick up the mesas, pick up the traditions mm -hmm. and walk this medicine path, mm -hmm. sharing these values, experiencing this right. richness, as it has been throughout time. Beautifully said. It's a time of great healing. It is. For ourselves, for our community at large. Yes. So perhaps we can say a little bit more about the upcoming course that's happening. Sure. The course is offered in four segments. Mm -hmm. Each segment consists of about four days, and the segments are offered at six-month intervals over an 18-month period. Our first segment for this upcoming training will be September 10th through 13th, and we hold it in a very beautiful rural location in the Aptos Hills. We have plenty of room outside for people to connect with nature, work on their individual processes, and we hold lectures, certain ceremonies in a beautiful, newly constructed 30-foot yurt. <laughs> so it's a delightful experience for all participants. We augment it by bringing in uh, catered meals. It's an optional program, but for those that uh, prefer to have meals served right on site, we have beautiful meals coming in. Uh, these classes are relatively small, although we've been reaching capacity. Yes. Uh, we will, uh, this, this coming class will consist of 30 people. We will cap it at 30 people. And there is typically at least one conference call for the group between segments, and then we will reconvene We'll continue that way for 18 months. Mm -hmm. Additionally, as you know, we will have uh, periodic fire ceremonies, not only for course participants, but for the entire community. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's really meant to enrich not only the individual, but our community life as well. Yeah. 
Fantastic. Here is a clip of Jose Luis and other shamans building a despacho, which is a prayer bundle. Well, ceremony is, uh, is is the backbone of 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 any any spiritual practice. You can assemble your reality by envisioning. You can assemble your reality by prayer. You can assemble reality by weaving the mystery into your actions, into your articulations, into your breath. A lot of these traditions are at the verge of being lost. Primarily, Ali has to do with the preservation of medicine traditions, folklore, cosmology, uh, knowledge around uh, medicinal plants, songs, philosophies uh, around the continuity of this dying tradition. So one of the things that I've discovered is that for myself personally, that the shamanism, I went through a personal tragedy and I felt that the shamanism really helped ground me and keep me present and really helped the healing process and overcoming this. And I know that when you're a mentoring practice, you probably see a lot of people who are sometimes feeling lost, sometimes feeling lonely, sometimes feeling out of touch. So. If you could say a little bit about how you work with that or what your experience has been. Absolutely, Rita. In our modern world, it's very, very common for the stresses, the strains, just the impact of the pace of our lives mm -hmm. for us all to get nudged or sometimes knocked way off center. Mm -hmm. And when that happens, we begin to lose a deeper connection, a deeper sense of ourselves. And this training has done so much for so many people, including myself, mm -hmm. in terms of bringing us back to center, restoring the sense of that which is sacred and magical in our lives, and thereby increasing our overall enjoyment mm -hmm. and our overall 
passion and effectiveness. Right. And relationships begin to change. Absolutely. And primarily the relationship to self begins to change and that begins to affect those that are in your intimate circle. Absolutely. That relationship with our essential nature is so vital to a dynamic mm -hmm. relationship of any type and the work, the course especially, allows us to begin to identify and develop a relationship with that with which in us, which mm -hmm. is essential, sacred, and we awaken memories of our fulfilled state mm -hmm. and bring that more and more mm -hmm. into our daily activity. So beautiful. Beautifully said. Thank you, Patrick. You're welcome. And let's dialogue intimately with spirit, envisioning, tracking ourselves, remembering what our healed state is about, feels like, looks like, remembering what is the best possible expression that we can summon ourselves into in this lifetime. What is our highest, most highest possibility as individuals in this lifetime? Let's track it with prayer. Pacha mama mucha napi 